Hello family, my name is Chris, I am your home gamer dad, and welcome to Gloomhaven, the digital version on the Switch. Yes, this is available on Steam and various other PC related ports and whatnot, but I wanted it on the Switch because I'm a console person first, I love the console, and I love my Switch. Having to play this on the go is absolutely amazing, and as much as I love the tabletop version of Gloomhaven, this digital one is fantastic. Now, I don't know how much of the campaign I'm going to be going through for you guys. Um, so you're going to let me know as you start watching it, you know, if you enjoy this, if you want to see more, la 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 la. 95 quests campaign plus any unlock of oh, that's it's this is a huge series if I really want to do everything. But I'm going to do as much as I can here and there and we're going to go all go along for the ride. So, let's begin a new campaign and see this opening video. Uh yeah, I got to do this first, don't I? Enter guild name, of course, is going to be... I was allowed 14 characters, so boom, it worked. I wanted to be Home Gamer Dads because it's multiple guys, but close enough. All right, so we're going to definitely do the normal uh, here. Uh, but I think original. Uh, let me read. Hold on. I think updated is what I'm just going to do whatever is recommended. So this is... Whatever this enhancement is can be removed and regained 75% of the original cost. That's fine. We're going to leave it like that. We're going to recommend. Perfect. Let's hold. And then all of this, I'm just going to set to recommended, which is recommended, 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 except for this one. Spawn monsters drop gold on death. Originally, the way this is, is whenever a monster would spawn in uh, through some type of game effect, you wouldn't be able to get any gold from it. I say no, not going to happen. I want as much gold as possible. It's the only thing I'm changing. So here we go. Uh, yep, yep, yep. We're going to enable this. Uh, do I really want the first night chat? Nope, no. We're just going to enable the Jaws of the Lion because I love Jaws of the Lion so much. Here we go. Welcome to the harsh lands of Gloomhaven, recruit. You think you have what it takes to become a mercenary out there on the edge of the world? We are paid to venture into the darkest forests of the region and to step into ancient crypts with the unmistakable stench of death and rotting flesh. Mmm, lovely places to earn a name for yourself. Be ready to face cutthroats, undead, fearsome tribes, and dreadful demons from other realms. You didn't find yourself as a mercenary without knowing how to crack a few skulls, did you? All right, that was fun. Before going to our wilderness surrounding Gloomhaven, you'll need at least two mercenaries, so we're going to go ahead and add those mercenaries in right now. So let's go ahead and go into here and check out what new mercenaries we have. So I have all of the base ones that you would get from the main blue uh, Gloomhaven, which is, yeah, 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 stop it over there. That's, that all to the right over there is a uh, tutorial. So we're not gonna worry about that. Uh, the Brute, the Mind Thief, the Scoundrel, the Spell Weaver, the Tinkerer, uh, not the Void Warden, and the crack heart. So these uh, six over here are base Gloomhaven. And then the Red Guard, the Void Warden, Hatchet, and Demolitionist are all uh, from Jaws of the Lion. And I'm going to be picking one of these here. I think I'm going to go Hatchet and I'm going to go Demolitionist because you need at least two in order to go and uh, just do anything of sorts. Demolition is awesome because it's like right up in their face, beating the heck out of them, destroying uh, obstacles, and is very physical in a sense. Um, and I love the ranged abilities for the hatchet. Very, very awesome character. Plus, now that I know how to use the favorite because it isn't just better that way. And yeah, they have one less card. I usually like the red guard too. Um, no, no, no. Void Warden is also really cool. I never knew she had that type of like funkiness on her face. Weird. Uh, but she's good, but she's better with uh, more uh, characters uh, to play with. Anyway, we're going to do Hatchet, and we're going to do Demolition, so let's start with Hatchet. Yep, there we go. Let's go ahead and create a character name. Hmm. All right, this is Hacks, because, you know, he has a hacksaw. Um, it's the best I got. And then they each have their own personal quest. This is basically their reasoning for wanting to be uh, a mercenary. And if you complete the objectives on here, which is kill 20 bandits or cultists, or kill one demon of each type from the base game, then you get these unlocks. Uh, this would be, uh, that triangle is a uh, character unlocked, and then prosperity, and then over here is another character unlocked and a prosperity. And basically this means you retire the character. I would no longer be able to play as this character, and then I would bring a new one into the adventure. 
Uh, I'm gonna take this one because I can definitely see killing bandits and cultists so much easier, especially if I'm doing, um, what is it? Uh, Jolt of the Lion uh, quests, which I think appear after maybe like two or three main ones. So we're gonna go ahead and go down. Oops, I didn't wanna move away from Gloomhaven. And we will add a new mercenary and we'll put in the Demolitionist, which I believe these are, this is a female, right? Possibly, I don't know, doesn't matter. I'm gonna say that it's a she anyway, we'll go with that. Boom, um, character name, Boomba. So we got the character name of Boomba. And I'm gonna let you know, if this gets to be a big series where you guys actually enjoy this and whatever, as time goes on, I'm gonna be asking for your recommendations, your names, your character layouts, things along that way. Um, <laughs> you guys will have a lot more say in this campaign as time goes on. It's just, I'm just doing this right now, so that's that. Uh, earn 15 perks. Oh, that's almost guaranteed gonna happen. Kill three oozes, three lurkers, and three spitting drakes. That's very, very specific. Um, I'm gonna be going ahead with this. I feel like I'll be needing the demolitionist for quite a while, uh, but earning perks is something that I try to do on every mission anyway. So she may retire after 15 missions. She may not, we'll have to see. But here is Boomba, she joined the party. Okay, so now that I have everybody here, we're gonna go over to the merchant, which is right here. And we get to go ahead and spend. Every one of the mercenaries has 30 gold to their name. And we have a variety of different things that we can buy for them. Uh, headgear, which is this. Armors, uh, these are, uh, what is this? Weapons, I guess, weapons and uh, shields and whatnot footwear and then base items. I definitely want to get everybody at least one base item because they're really good. These are a one-time use per uh, scenario. And then I got to figure out the rest. All right, let me let me look through this really quickly. For hacks, I'm just going to start off by buying the eagle-eyed goggles because they gain advantage on every uh, attack that I do. And he has multiple attacks that he can do uh, from a range. So this is going to be the first thing I buy and that's going to be equipped to him. That's going to use all of his gold in one shot. Yeah, I wish that I could have bought something else, but you know, it'll be fine. Being that Boomba is more of a front range fighter, uh, the way that she works and everything, we're gonna go defensive right off the bat and we'll figure out other things as we go along. So first we're gonna get the Iron Helm, which will take any times two crits against her and make them uh, zero instead, which you'll understand as we go through the game. Uh, and then I'm going to do, which one of these am I gonna do? I'm gonna do, uh, let's do the next time you are attacked, the attacker gains disadvantage on two. It's probably going to go with that because if I do the hide armor, then I'm adding two minus ones into my deck and I don't want to do that. So, um, or should I do a shield? Yeah, we're going to go with the heater shield just to give her uh, at least one uh, bit of defense, but that's going to be it. That's all the gold that they have. Another thing that I could do is go to the temple of great Oak. I don't have any more gold left, but I could give two gold to the temple and gain two blessings into their modifier decks, which is pretty much the additional damage that they do every turn. If I do 100 gold, then I get some good stuff, but I don't have any gold, so that doesn't matter. Uh, we are already here, and now we are in Gloom Haven. What I want to do first is do a city encounter. So we have uh, a regular quest right here. This is like a side quest, and then the Black Burrows, which is what we're gonna be doing now um, once I uh, do this city encounter. So here we go, go to Gloomhaven and we get a city encounter. As the daylight fades, you find yourself wandering through a half crowded market street browsing wares. Hey, over here, you turn in the direction of voice to see a filthy vermling gesturing from a dark alley. Yeah, you grim looking chaps. I have something you might be interested in. The vermling holds a piece of metal covered in sludge. Found this in the sewer, writing on I own sand, but it was valuable. You can have it for 10 gold. I don't have the gold, so unfortunately, I have to refuse to pay. I don't even think this will... I want it. Will it let me do this? I'm, I'm gonna try to do it, even though I don't have the gold. Ah, dang it. All right, nope, nope, I needed the gold. I needed the gold. And if I said no, he would have walked away anyway. All right, whatever, that's that. Uh, these are like random encounters that you may get positives and negative effects uh, on your team uh, as you go uh, to and from Gloomhaven. So what we have right here is our first uh, actual mission, the Black Borrows. Before I do anything else, I'm allowed to look at all my cards for both of my characters and everyone can equip a certain amount of cards. Boomba can have nine and, okay, I'm back up, there we go. And uh, there we go, sorry. Hacks can have 10, Boomba can have nine. And out of the nine that are lit up right here, 
I can then also go and uh, change them around and switch them up if I want to. So let me look at these really quickly and then uh, I'll let you know what my starting deck is. All right, I'm not going to go over every card here because you'll see them in action as we go through the dungeon, but I did do a little bit of switching around for hacks because remember all three on the bottom were not used, so I switched them. Uh, Boomba, I'm not 100% familiar with her deck yet, so I'm just going to leave it at the base and then see how this works, and then I can switch around things in the middle of uh, or afterwards and whatnot. Uh, as far as uh, reputation and wealth, as you see up there, that's all based off of stuff that'll happen uh, as Gloomhaven grows and I get to be a better mercenary. So. Kill all enemy objectives, as you can see to the right over there, we have bandit archers, bandit guards, and living bones. Let's go ahead, we have to find these treasure treasures. Here we go. Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in the Sleeping Lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods, well, seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him. Just bring back what is mine. Based on Jaxera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. All right, here we go. And on our way from Gloomhaven to the Black Barrows, we will generally always have, or to our mission, whatever it is, we will have an encounter. And this is like a similar encounter that we had back in the city. You come across a group of browbeaten Enochs, which are basically what Hatchet is, uh, trudging down the path in the opposite direction to you. You're pulling, some are pulling carts laden with various miscellaneous, mostly furs, crudely crafted goods, rest armloads, much the same. It's obvious that this is everything the Enochs have. Their life's worth of, wow, they're covered in what appears to be soot. The shaman at head groups uh, calls to you, the beast awaits, the, the mountain is in flame, beware, you do not anger it. Looking in the horizon, you see black smoke, oh, really? Um, uh, do, 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 do. I'm gonna actually aid them because I feel like Hatchet, being an Enox himself, would want to help out his fellow Enox. Uh, let's see. You take pity on the shell group of Enochs forced in their homes. Da, 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 Shan, thanks you. You can't return. We can't return to our homes. Da, da, da. Ten collective gold. So we get ten between a, a start of scenario two. Discard two cards each. Oh man. Ah, so I'm already at a disadvantage. Um, <laughs> sorry, Boomba. I'm taking. I'm giving it all to Hacks because they're his people. There we are. Beautiful. I feel like Hacks will be able to, or um, Bobo will be able to pick up more gold as we go around. It's easy enough to find. A short journey past the new market gate, and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood, looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here, you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. All right, here we are. So at the beginning of every uh, scenario, we also have one of these uh, objectives. This is a unique objective for this particular mercenary. And if we do it, we get the perk point. And every three perk points enables us to uh, modify our modifier deck, which is what we do to deal additional damage or maybe not deal damage. It kind of goes back and forth. Loot a chest during this scenario. 
you know what? There's only one chest in scenario. I'm gonna make sure that hacks get it. So sure, that's easy enough to do. Uh, kill one or more elite monsters. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do that. That's easy enough. Collect more money tokens than any other character. Allow none of your allies to become exhausted during this scenario. Not very good at keeping hacks unexhausted this early in the game. So you need the gold anyway, Bumba. So there we go. You got to collect a lot of money. You got to loot a chest. We got enemies to fight. Let's enter this dungeon. All right. First thing I had to do is I got to do two, choose two cards in order to toss. Um, the way when you pick cards, you want to watch the numbers oh, that's to the left. That's the initiative. The lower initiatives will always go first. So generally in this early, I would probably rather get rid of some of these. I'll get rid of, I like that multi-target thing. That would be awesome. Uh, we're going to get rid of retrieval and we're going to get rid of, uh, I'll get rid of stopping power. Okay, so we'll get rid of those. And as for Bomba, hmm, let me look through these. All right, I'm gonna toss Explode and the big one. These aren't gone from the game, mind you. These are just in my discard pile that I'll be able to get back later. And if you look over to the right, you can see the attack modifiers and how many of them are in uh, Bumba's deck. So uh, that's kind of her shtick right there. Um, Take care of these unfortunates, your target says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Joke's on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. Good point, good point, narrator. All right, so again, you look over to the right over there, you can actually see um, some stats for everybody. Can I get that back, please? Yeah, I guess not, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm more worried about killing all the enemies and collecting more money than uh, than my hatchet friend here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the favorite for uh, Hacks over here, which is his special ability um, up there. Uh, it adds a lot more power to his attacks. And then his second card, so the way you do this is you pick two cards. And the way your cards work is that you would take one of the two cards that you picked and do the top ability, and then you would take the second card and do the bottom ability. All top abilities have either a special ability, which is the main thing that you see there, or you can do a basic two attack, which is to the left and like middle. Bottom ones are usually move style cards, so you can just do a basic move, or you can do uh, whatever the special move is here can push people around, care packages. Um, hmm. Let's see, let's see. I think what I'm gonna do is, and you wanna be careful because if you see a card that has like that burning symbol in the bottom right, see where it says the, the bottom part, move four and your next turn, yada, 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 all the way in the bottom right, is that burn? If I use that ability, this card is gone from the game. And if I have no more cards that I can pull for my character, then um, that's it. Then, then they're out of the, uh, then they're out of this mission completely. Um, I think I'm just gonna take follow through. So that'll be the two I do for you. And I'm not gonna do this every time. I'm just kind of looking through this right now to see what might be my best uh, choices. I don't have any obstacles to destroy. I can move one adjacent enemy uh, adjacent to a wall. I think there's enemies away from the wall. Is there any way I can see the battlefield? I don't know, I don't think I can see it, but I'm gonna take crushing weight and wind up. And that's gonna be uh, what I'm doing here. Now, now that I've chosen my cards, the enemies get to have their initiatives as well. So the Bandit Guard has initiative 15. If the Bandit Guard Elite has initiative 15. They're shielding themselves, and if they were bolted within range, they would attack me. So this is probably better off because I don't want to be poisoned. Being poisoned stinks. No. Oh yeah, those two guys are against the wall, of course. So that's that. Bandit Guards. No. So they each all shield up one, which means that any damage that they take is going to be reduced by one. Um, not that I'm doing any damage this turn anyway. So we're gonna activate the favorite on me. Can I please turn this a little bit? There we go. Yeah, war. Uh, and then I get to move to and push an adjacent enemy. So yeah, why don't we do that? Let's just move to here. Confirm the movement. I'll choose to push you. And you can go here. Can I please choose the push? Push one, 
Start, I, I choose you. Why can't I choose uh, this thing? All right, no idea why it's not letting me push. If anybody out there knows the rules better of Gloomhaven than I do, inform me why I can't push this guy back one. Am I not allowed to push him against a door? That's, that's about the only reason I can think of in terms of like why I can't push. Um, I can move to, uh, I don't even have enough movement to do what I want to do anyway. Oh man, that stinks. Uh, all right, well then we're just going to, so here you go. So I can either do a basic move action of two or I can move two according to this and then do the special ability. Um, man, I wonder if you then would have been considered against the wall. Would that have been a wall? Oh man, all right, see, I'm, I'm, a lot of stuff I'm learning here in terms of how, how the best way to play these characters. Uh, okay, do I need, to, I, there's nobody I can push, so skip the ability. And then this is gonna go down, so for the next two attacks that I make, there's gonna be an increased damage, and then I start gaining some experience as well. Awesome, okay. So that's the end of the turns, and that's it. That's a round, and now we just kind of redo everything else. Uh, let me pick my cards. All right, so I'm gonna do an extra lift here and then a disorienting barrage. Uh, basically, this is gonna move me backwards, just the two or one, and then I'm just gonna hit three targets with this. And then we have, uh, this is going to be, no, I'm just gonna use knockout support for the basic, or for the move two and strengthening myself, and then I'm gonna do a one-two punch. So hopefully we'll be able to go before they do. 55, oh yes, sweet, okay, cool. So we're gonna use this first. I'm gonna move right here, confirm, boop, boop, boop. Uh, skip the rest of the movement because I don't need anything else. Activate the ability, come on. Uh, destroy, oh yeah, I don't have, uh, yeah, I don't have a, an object to destroy, so I can't strike to myself, but that's okay. No problem, so now we're gonna attack and I'm gonna focus on this dude right here because he's probably the strongest one and I can muddle him and gain experience and everything if I just keep focusing on him. So that's what we're gonna do. First attack, this should do two, and then you're gonna see a number pop up over the word attack there. Ah, oh, minus one, okay. So that was me pulling from the modifier deck and that kind of uh, adjusts how that attack is going to be. Gain experience plus two, two more damage, there we go. Boom, knocked out, I gained some experience and he is uh, beaten down. Do I want to push him? I could push him here. Um, hey, you know what? I'm actually not going to push because if I go here, one, two, three, yeah. No, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna not push him. Actually, we're gonna end the demolition's turn. Hatchet goes. I'm gonna use the basic move to move back one. Yep. Go back this way. Skip the rest of the movement. And now we're gonna target. We're gonna go one. And actually for this dude, we're gonna use our goggles and we're gonna use uh, my favorite. So now that just increases the damage. Two, three, and three targets. Here we go, launch it. Yeah. Nice, got him there. So that time zero would have been a complete miss, which is awesome. And then plus one, plus one, beautiful, there he goes. Knocking everybody down, awesome. Uh, that unfortunately is the end of his turn, but we did some good damage there. So now they're gonna go and they're just gonna attack. Uh, do I wanna do, do I, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna take that for right now. Oh, he strengthened himself. Yeah, I know, I gotta get rid of these guys as soon as possible. Muddling means that they are, are disadvantaged. So that's just gonna hit me for times two. Um, you know what, let's actually go ahead and use that and just take one damage. Yeah. And then the other guy is gonna hit me as well. Minus one, okay. One damage, best I can do. I could also toss cards from my hand in order to negate all damage, but I, I'm not gonna be doing that. Round three, here we go. Second win in close cuts, and then explosive blitz and implode. Here we go. Uh, 70 and 70, wow, okay, cool, so I go first. Uh, I'm gonna use this, uh, if you kill, plus two move and gain one experience if you killed an enemy this round. Unfortunately, this would have to come second uh, because what I need to do is I need to move here, confirm movement, boop, 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 and then I can do cross cuts and hit him 
and him. So both of these guys are getting nailed, which is awesome. So, uh, no, 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 back up this dude. So these two guys get hit. Here we go. Get him! Oh, it's times two and the other guy falls. Fantastic. And I can go and collect my, uh, my favorite at that point. Uh, as far as this guy goes, I can just do an attack three. I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, move if you open a door, perform. Well, I guess I can try to open a door. Let's do an attack three on, I'm gonna do an attack three on this guy. Come on, plus one, plus one. Ah, oh, man, <sighs> Oof, got him. Uh, and then I guess I will, if you open a door during the movement, perform, yeah, sure, why not, let's go. Let's go open the, uh, the door. Open the door, trigger up. Hello, everyone in this room. That's fun. Uh, psh, all enemies target within range three. One, two, okay, so I can actually, that's fine. Let's skip the movement and confirm these targets. One, two, Three, four, yeah, they're all targeted. Cool, let's do it. That's amazing, that's great. Oh man, she has some awesome abilities here. All right, so the archer isn't gonna go anywhere. Uh, just moving up a little bit, probably putting some uh, stuff. Wow, what a range. Um, I'll just take that. I gotta figure out, I gotta pull, uh, what is it? I gotta heal, actually, is what I gotta do now. All right, everybody stopped, so that was that. Um, oh man, so I have one card for the Demolitionist. I'm going to need to rest. I can short rest, which just gets burns a random card from my discard pile, but then I'm able to do stuff again. Or I can long rest, which will also heal me. I actually think short resting at this point is the best because I need to really play aggressive at this point. Um, oh man, that's a good one too. Oh, my loot! Ah, oh, fine, whatever. I don't really want to take another damage in order to not have that happen. And then we'll just center mass and care package and crushing weight and pistons. Let's see who goes first. Uh, the bandit guard goes first, which I think is all four of these guys. <laughs> but they're under shield one and retali- oh, they're all shielding and retaliating? Uh-oh, that's not good. That can spell some pretty bad damage for, uh... Oh, and I didn't even notice that, um... My Demolitionist is immobile, so she can't even move from where she is anyway. Oh, man, I am mobilized, so you can't... That stinks. So I can't move. Uh, I can stun one uh, adjacent enemy. Um, or I can just kill you. I think I'm just gonna kill you. And I didn't take any damage because you died, which is fine. And I don't have any other enemies to stun, so, um, yeah, uh, and turn. Hatchet goes, hatchet, um, I'd rather just move. Um, we're gonna move one. Um, one, two, I can't even do, ah, man, I want to get here to get my, um, my favorite, but I can't do that. So we're going to move up here. All right. So that's the rest of the movement and I can at least heal you for one. Good. And then we can do a range three on this dude right here. He may have a shield, but he won't retaliate any on me because I'm not uh, adjacent to him. <clears throat> Fantastic. Awesome. And uh, that's it for the turn. And Hatcher's going to pick up money. So that's the first gold that he picked up. So I need uh, <laughs> I need my uh, demolitions to, to here to now start uh, building stuff up. Ouch. Two damage, oh no. All right, uh, unfortunately, Hatchet can't do anything right now. So I'm actually just gonna take this time to short rest. What am I getting rid of? Follow through? Eh, fine, whatever. So he can go again. And all right, now I gotta, what do I wanna do? What do I wanna do? 
All right, here we go. Banded archers go. So uh, the way I'm working this is, uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. let's, so I have earth in the field, which is awesome. Uh, attack plus one and muddle. All right, cool. So we're just gonna go ahead and move. I'm gonna move right here with Demolitionist. She's gonna go a hasty retreat just cause she's not doing so well. Uh, skip the ability, cause I don't really need, cause there's nothing next to me, but I am gonna go ahead and punch this guy. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's add the element to it. And <laughs> great, now you do the five damage, fantastic. All right, so you end your turn. Uh, Bandit Archer is gonna go, you need to come up because I don't think you have any range on anybody. Are you gonna move? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Fantastic, okay, cool. Oh, ow, oh, you do have range on me over there? Oh no, ow. All right, I need to get rid of that Archer like immediately. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna move one, which is right here. So we confirm that move. And then we use the action to loot. And looting basically takes gold from every adjacent space. And I have my um, favorite back, which means I can target three right at this archer. And I can use, come on, I can use my favorite to increase the damage. So now you see it's attack six. I need to kill it, so plus one. Oh, so close. Oh no, ouch. All right, well now here's hoping that uh, Hatchet survives whatever these guys are moving to and attacking to. Uh oh, they're coming right at him. Right at him. Ow. Ugh. I could burn one card in my hand to avoid that damage completely, or, oh man, I burn one available card. Hmm. Ugh, I'm gonna get rid of extra lift. Yeah, burn extra lift. And then that dude's gonna come in. Yeah, right there. Minus two, sweet, awesome, no damage at all. That that worked out way better than I thought it was going to. Um, you, uh, hmm. uh, oh no, the archer goes first. Ah, uh, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, uh, minus one, please let me survive. All right, I have three. I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Okay, all right. Yeah, you're gonna put a trap right there. Of course you would. Uh, so I'm gonna first move three. I'm gonna go right here. So confirm movement. So the thing with the range abilities is that um, if I hit something that's a next to me with a range ability, then I get disadvantage on it, which really stinks. But for right now, I really just need to do something. So I'm gonna target one, two, and this one's gonna have disadvantage, unfortunately, but I still will muddle it. So here we go. First attack, dead, that makes me happy. Second attack, two damage, that's fine by me. And then this is gonna be disadvantage on this one, minus one, so no damage. All right, that's fine. Uh, that's gonna be the end of Hatchet's turn. And at least now all I have to do is worry about them. Um. Destroy one. I don't think I have. I don't think there are any objects for me to destroy. Um, I can move four, get right up next to one of these guys. And my my gar my characters are so weak right now, though. They only have like two health apiece. Um, hmm. All right, so we're just gonna move right here, and then we're gonna go ahead and take a hit against this dude right here. Confirm target, be big, be big, be big. That's not big, that was actually terrible. That's an awful, awful hit uh, because they're still here. Uh-huh, I agree. And now they're gonna come and hit me. Well, at least they're muddled, so that was zero damage. Uh, but I do have to burn a card or else I will. Oh, I chose to burn the card. What, what? I wanted to burn a card, not the other thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no, I hit B instead of A. Oh no. Oh great, and then they have Retaliate this turn. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they have Retaliate this turn? All right, well, pretty much at this point, I know I'm gonna die, so whatever. Let's move on down over here. Hop on down. Uh, skip the rest of the movement. Heal myself. This isn't gonna really work out very well, but this <laughs> I, I, I need to play this a few times in order to get a better understanding of uh, how some of these decks work. And then, of course, can I can I actually retarget you over here? 
Thank you. They're both gonna retaliate back at me, so it doesn't really matter. Great, that's fine, that's dandy. Uh, they, they both hit me, so uh, receive the two damage, and we're just gonna die. Oh, I am dead. And we have been defeated. And because we failed the scenario, neither of us got our perk and uh, all that other fun stuff. So let's just return to the map because I'll, I'll figure it out that later. Oh, a new quest opened up. The Burning Mountain for some odd reason. Sure, why not? Oh, and I was able to defeat some guys from, uh, for, for Hatchet. So that was that. Uh, so we got some experience at least. Uh, there's a few gold for Hatchet that he was able to get along the road. And of course, the way he picked up and everything. Uh, and then we could also do another counter in the Gloomhaven City. Why don't we go ahead and just do that? Just just for the heck of it, to finish off this episode. And trust me, going forward, these will be a little bit better. So maybe this will be, maybe this will make a turn for us. You wake in the middle of the night to the sound of alarms ringing in the west. You recognize them as warning clans, clangs of attacking on the wall. Any forces bold enough to assist the defense of Gloomhaven. Let's just aid the city. Five ex uh, experience for everybody, fantastic. And we gain some prosperity. The more prosperity we gain, the cheaper stuff is. So if you look that in the upper left are there, wealth, so that's prosperity going up. And then if I do reputation, I get more, um, uh, uh, what is that, experience and other things. I don't know. I want my reputation to go up. I want my wealth to go up for Gloomhaven. That's the idea behind both of them. We did get another uh, mission that opened up, this travel to the Burning Mountains up over this way. Uh, but I'm not gonna be doing that anytime soon. That looks a little bit too hard for my liking. So. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Gloomhaven. It was definitely not my best showing, but I'm gonna tell you what now, I'm gonna do a lot better as time goes on. Um, next time, it's gonna be a different uh, quest. Uh, I may show some uh, highlights from me actually beating Black Barrow, and then I'll do something else. Uh, or I may just go back to the Black Barrow with a little bit better of uh, an idea in mind. Speed through it of sorts. And maybe somebody will finish his nap uh, before I do that. So, thank you all again. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you liked what you've seen, be sure to subscribe to the Home Gamer Dad so you don't miss any future Gloomhaven action or any other fun video I have to put out for you to enjoy. My littlest one is here, it's getting fussy, and I need to strategize a little more. So you guys have a good one, and I will see you in the next one. Later.